Ignore that reflection in the mirror. Hello, humans and non-humans. I'm Unscary Nightmare Axolotl, SCB. Mothra is not just the human's overly spoiled New Zealand bunny. It's also the fictional kaiju from the Godzilla universe of monsters. And as this is October for the Halloween special, it seems fitting to put in one of the movies with Mothra. Mothra is one of the few female monsters in the franchise, though on occasion gets switched over to being a male monster. This is just going to focus on one movie. The Rebirth of Mothra 3 was made in 1998, but not released to the US until 2014. So that's why it feels so totally 90s. And because I'm a small creator on this platform, YouTube has deemed my channel unworthy of using the audio or video. So we're stuck with movie stills. But if it turns out I can't use those, no Halloween special this year. Quick note, in some cases, the bun bun wears wings and in some not. But that's because when Mothra was used to recreate some of these scenes, he let us know in his own special way to F off. No bunnies were harmed in the recreating movie scenes, but several cardboard boxes can no longer be used for storage. Also, if mismatching English dub and English subtitles piss you off, especially during the Squid Games, it ain't any better here. With that, participation award for the intro that immediately let us know with a style to expect. Plus, it does some cool symbol stuff in the rock, though it is weird that it starts on Infant Island? I don't know if that's a legit or just a translation thing. Then it... <sighs> of course the cat is in heat now. Then it brings in some 80s vibes with a Legend of Zelda homage, so point for that. We start out meeting the fairies that often accompany Mothra, Belvra, Lora, and Maul, and their little moth that was called Fairy. Point for imitating Dudley Do-Right naming his horse, Horse. Which, this might actually be a translation thing, so scratch that. The three comprise a little coven in this legally different from the Legend of Zelda temple, with Belvra having her own transportation name Garu Garu, they have little triangle things and daggers, some match, some don't, which foreshadows that something is coming. Which is said by one of the fairies, quote, The King of Terror is coming. You know, just in case that was ambiguous. We then cut to a truck driver from Puji Yoshida City, Yamanashi? He's driving down the road as a comet falls in the forest. If a comet falls in the forest and no one hears, will the kaiju appear? It turns out that the truck driver has a family that has hamsters, and the kids say that something is up because the hamsters are acting weird. It's been a while since I've had hamsters, but they seemed fine. Then there is a scene discussing the cost of watermelon, which of course I had to look up. By the way, we're not talking about those square ones that are stupid high price, but just a normal roundish watermelon. Picture for reference. And after some light googling, they're about 40 bucks, so point for making me research the cost of fruit because that is ridiculous. The comet falls in the Aoki forest, which turns out to not be a real forest, but instead brings up I... that name near Mount Fuji in Japan. The comet's special effects are very 80s, but now we're in Katsuyama City. Since I don't understand cardinal directions and have no idea which items are taking place where as it's a little confusing throughout the movie, but it doesn't really matter. Since the debris is falling up when the comet hits, it's a pretty good sign we're in for a movie with some interesting special effects. Meanwhile, back with the trucker's family, we find out that the oldest boy of the three doesn't go to school, the parents have no idea why, and I'm taking a point away that the mom thinks the reason he doesn't want to school is because she has a job. However, point back because the husband says that's definitely not the reason, but he doesn't know either. I'm guessing this is a translation thing about being a stay-at-home mom. Any oxily do. The daughter does know, but it's confusing. The way she talks about being forced to eat school lunch, but not wanting to, something with authority. It was weird. Honestly, this movie makes so many questions, but no answers. Why are they forced to eat school lunch? What is the school lunch? because I guarantee it was better than anything I ever had. Is there a penalty for not eating lunch? Are they not allowed to bring their own? Were they bullied for some reason? Inquiring axolotl brains need to know what is up. And what's 
about the New York Jets? I don't care for baseball and it has no impact on the story, so why have it in? Was it just a random prop? Did someone actually like the New York Jets? All hail the New York Giants! New York Giants! <laughs> so the parents tell little Shota not to go into the woods, but because he's a kid, he definitely followed what his parents told him to do and stayed home. I'm kidding, of course he didn't. He wandered off into the woods and finds a red orange blob thing. Bob is back in a horrifying new adventure. And you are there, startled, stunned, terrified, as the blood red creature rolls over and eats everything in its path. Out there. Then we see Maul and Laura with Fairy into the woods and find out more about the monster connected with the blob. Not that blob from the movie with Steve McQueen, but we find out from Maul and Laura that this comet was around first and killed the dinosaurs, but this time it's Comet 2, kill all humans and destroy the planet. The schools have papers flying around and this is a music class, I'm guessing Bach? Plus we get our first glimpse of King Ghidorah, G G just gonna call him King G. A three-headed dragon with fiery indigestion. Point for the shadow over the town, it's kind of cool and ominous. If this kaiju is supposedly out to kill all humans, then what is the deal with dissolving all the children and transporting them to the blob, but not the adults? Is it easier to destroy all humanity if all the kids are rounded up first? Does it make the parents more distraught? So many questions. Does anyone think of the children? <laughs> Won't somebody please think of the children? It is kind of funny to see the kid throw the soccer ball at the orb and watch it dissolve. Fork it. Point. I am having difficulty finding the mitochondria since it is the powerhouse of the cell. A, A, A. The two sisters start singing for Mothra to come out of hiding and fight King G, who seems to be protecting the orb that holds only children for some reason as a way to destroy humanity. But they fight, and there's lasers, nose dives, and apparently stepping on Mothra. No, seriously. That's just weird. No point for the feet thing. The feet? I told you, but I told you, I told you, every, didn't I tell him about the feet? He did tell you about the feet. So after some monster WWE, we see the fairies fall out of the sky and find out that no human child is safe, even within buildings, because King G steals them out of the school. While the kids are in the super off-brand Epcot Center, these weird tentacle things come out. But luckily for us, it does not turn into hentai, so have no fear. And if you had doubts this was the 90s, they still have the big old TVs that would break your leg if it fell on you. You want a small color TV set with a really great picture, express tuning and ultra modern styling, then buy a Sony Trinitron. If you want a medium sized color TV with the same great picture plus infrared remote control, then there's a Sony Trinitron for you too. We find out from that old TV that 528 kids are missing from the school and they were able to figure out the kinda are in das blob. Faster than the police here would, but credit to the fact that they don't just shoot the moment they see it. But the boy that refuses to go to the school follows the fairies into a dark cave because dark caves have never steered anyone wrong. Then we learn more about the plot and that Laura was possessed by King G and is under his spell and the boy has to get her out of it. At least both kids' parents go to save them, so point for teamwork. We then find out that someone has to go back in time to destroy King G. And in true Superman fashion, Mothra rockets into the past, and once you go back, you can't return. Wouldn't you know, there's a great quote from Laura to Shota when he says he's afraid to go to school. She says, quote, You're not afraid. You're very sensitive to the way that people treat you. You can't stand anger or intimidation, and that's a good thing. And then she dies. 
He died? And this is supposed to be a kid's movie. Meanwhile, back in the Stone Age, we can tell they're definitely in the past because it's sort of a red sepia tone, and we see the dinosaurs roaming around. Meanwhile, back in modern day, the parents have a Goonie moment. Louise, are you sure there isn't something down there you can use to climb out? Oh, wait! Here's a grappling hook! Oh, ho, ho! And here's an escalator! Silly me! We're about to die, Louise! Do you really want your last words to be sarcastic? No! Time check, and we're about two-thirds of the way through the movie, and time hasn't slowed down too terribly. Unlike other movies. We get jerked back to the Stone Age, and yes, I'm aware it's probably the Cretaceous period. And look up in the sky. It's not a bird, not an airplane, because it's not invented yet. It's Mothra. Shing, sparkle, sparkle. But it's in the past, so it's fire and laser, so twice the damage fights now, and King G giving a more than slightly warm hug to Mothra with fire. Back to the future, the boy seems to have broken the spell for Laura, and the three fairies figure out that the swords and triangles all fit together for a super weapon. Combining all nine tools, you get this. A deadlier weapon than any one item in the box. So, I'm going to use this to attack you, and you use respect to defend yourself. So while that is getting figured out, Mothra and King G continue to fight in the past, and Mothra falls out of the sky, and Laura comes back, and Mothra is able to get the other kaiju to fall into the volcano. In the future, the blob turns into blue and purple and starts to dissipate, and the children are free. Free, I say. However, Mothra does not make it, and gets a... cocoon shower, shall we say? Inappropriate silly string? Expulsion from ancient Caterpie? I'm just gonna leave this here. If you guess that's a larvae pod to bring back Mothra, you're right. They then discuss the implications of overlapping time travel paradoxes, but I think Futurama handled it best. We're going to test it by going forward in time one minute. Get in. Okay, hurry, let's get it over with. Uh-oh, this new universe is about 10 feet lower than our old one. Pow! We took care of the time travel paradox. Somehow, there is still 20 minutes left, and King G actually comes back, so he wasn't killed after all, and everyone starts running away again. And apparently, using the same plan, and starts stealing all the children again. It's now Destruction of Humanity Plan B. It's completely different from plan A in that it's exactly the same. The fairies try to go up against King G, and what's that in the sky? We've already established it's not a bird, not a plane. It's Mothra being reborn with some neato wings and kick butt armor. Point. On it. Point! Face off part two, the reckoning. Mothra is bigger, better, faster. He sucker punches the other kaiju and he gets a wing tear. Then it's death by glitter, I guess. And Mothra can remove the armor. Dope. But they want to bring back the fairy sister that died, which means more glitter. And what's that? There's still seven minutes? Good gravy, what's left? At least it isn't the Lord of the Rings ending, but everyone congratulates each other and Mothra flies off into the sunset with glitter and victory. And with that, there is a total of 10 participation award points minus one for a total of nine. These points can be redeemed at any participating blockbuster location for free movie recommendation. Once again, no fluffy bun buns were harmed in the making of this video. Thank you so much for making it this far and have a great holiday if you fill up to it. Until next time. Beware of the blob, he sneaks and creeps and glides and slides across the floor. And I don't know what the rest of the words were.